Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Thomas Devornik. I'm an engineer at Salesforce. I've been working on developer tools here for about eight years. Um, so pretty passionate about the platform. I currently live in Colorado uh, in Denver. There's my email and my GitHub and Twitter alias. If you guys want to follow me or tweet me or whatever, I'm always happy to answer questions or, or just communicate in general. Uh, what I want to do today is I want to talk about um, what Salesforce Dance really is and try to build up this mental cheat sheet, if you will, so that we can all intelligently communicate about it and what it really means. Before I get started, um, as with any uh, talk here, make purchasing decisions based on what's generally available and not on the contents uh, of my slides in my presentation today. So I could just jump in and give you this cheat sheet, the single page that you can look at and kind of understand more about it. But instead, we're going to go on kind of this journey. And before we talk about what Salesforce DX is, we're going to talk about what it is not. Because I hear a lot of comments from people about what it's not, and I just want to clarify some of that. We'll go through some more misconceptions at the end. And then I'll kind of tell you some other resources here at Trailhead to kind of learn more. So first off, DX is not, and this may come to a surprise to a lot of you, it's not a conference. Now, I actually thought this was pretty entertaining, and I've heard it a couple of times, and I quote, Dreamforce is like marketing, or like, uh, sorry, uh, Salesforce DX is like Dreamforce with less marketing and Metallica. And that's technically a true statement, right? Salesforce DX does not have Metallica. Um, we do have a lot less marketing than Dreamforce. Um, but Obviously, this person got confused with Trailhead DX. Y'all are here. I'm assuming y'all know that it's not a conference. But it kind of goes to show the wide, varying opinions about what Salesforce DX really is. Um, there's a lot of different user personas here. Not only do we have developers and admins, there are sales users, marketing users. Um, there's a lot of different people that participate on Salesforce. And so when they hear Salesforce DX, they have no idea what it means. And so we should communicate and clearly tell them what it is or it's not. This is probably the number one thing I want you to walk away from this talk from, is that Salesforce DX is not a product. This is the thing I hear the most about. I don't know where that echo is coming from. Uh, probably the thing I hear the most about, and um, it's just not a product. So we shouldn't refer to it as a product. A lot of times I hear people say, I can't use Salesforce DX. I don't really know what they mean by that, right? How can you not use or use a, something that is not a product? Um, another thing I hear quite often is Salesforce DX doesn't work for me. Um, again, what doesn't work for me? Generally what you're talking about is you're talking about a very specific problem with a tool or a feature or a product that doesn't work for your use case. So let's talk about it as such, right? Let's talk about it as um, the thing you're actually using instead of just this general um, idea that Salesforce DX does not work. Another one I actually hear from a lot of people, which may also kind of surprise you a little bit, and Salesforce DX will fix all of my problems. Now, in general, there is no magic bullet in engineering. So we shouldn't talk about Salesforce DX as a magic bullet. There's going to be a lot of individual products, features, and tools that will solve some of your problems for you um, that are kind of part of this DX umbrella. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Closely related, DX is not the CLI and is not any other single product, feature, or tool. So kind of related to what I said before, but a little bit more um, specialized in the fact that people actually are talking about the CLI, but they use the term Salesforce DX. So again, we should not use that when you're talking about an individual product, right? Let's talk about what the thing is that you're actually talking about. Now this kind of goes into what DX is, and really it is our commitment to improve the developer experience. And when we first announced Salesforce DX like three years ago, it, we kind of talked about it as an initiative, an initiative to improve the developer experience. Um, and as part of that, we've come out with a lot of tools to kind of help fix with the ALM, right? The application lifecycle management. There are a lot of different stages in there that are part of the developer experience. A lot of different product features and tools. I don't know where that echo is coming from. Um, sorry. And so uh, more specifically, there are a lot of other pieces of the platform that you may not even think about at Salesforce DX in terms of like metadata, right? When you are developing on the platform, you're interacting with different pieces of metadata. And in that metadata, there are a lot of different gaps. So if you're working it with it in the metadata API, and then you try to use it in, let's say, packaging or change set development, um, and it won't work, that's really frustrating, right? So as part of this initiative, as part of this commitment to improve that experience, we want to fill all those gaps. And so that's kind of a very specific example of things that we're doing to try to improve this 
process and this, um, you know, just experience in general. Hopefully you have all have seen this kind of application lifecycle management wheel. We have showed it many times at Trailhead and Dreamforce. In the center there, you'll see source control repository. Then in the middle circle is what actual application lifecycle management is. It is the design, code, build, um, test, and release of software. And this is really um, not specialized to Salesforce. Any other product or technology you work on, you're generally doing these stages of development. And everything you do in, this, in all of these stages are part of the developer experience. And so that's really what we're trying to do is improve that experience. On the outer wheel, you'll see a lot of things that are specific to Salesforce, things that have come out of this initiative, things like the Salesforce CLI, um, you know, the VS Code extensions, scratch orgs, uh, unlock packaging. These are all things that we're trying to do to solve problems you guys are experiencing and make that just the overall experience better. Um, you'll even notice things on here that have been part of the platform for way before we ever used the term Salesforce DX, such as uh, sandboxes, right? Sandboxes have been for, around for a very, very long time. So that is part of your development experience, and we've done things to improve that as well. If you've heard of the Lightning Dev Pro sandboxes, um, now you can build sandboxes in minutes and, as opposed to hours, right? So we're constantly trying to create more things for you guys to use to improve this um, just as a whole. Now here's a bunch of other things that I kind of mentioned. Um, you know, I consider anything in the platform part of the developer experience. Anything that you use as part of de uh, developing and releasing software um, is part of the developer experience. We're talking about metadata, uh, different API channels such as tooling, metadata, change sets, right? These are all things that are part of your experience when you're developing on the platform. Other products and features such as scratch orgs, um, what we call source development, which is when you're pulling stuff locally and you decompose your metadata using the CLI. Uh, Lightning Web Components, right? Trying to use more standards as opposed to uh, being very specific to the Salesforce technology stack. Other tools, I've already mentioned the CLI and VS Code extensions. And even further than that are these general philosophies, right? When you're developing, you think about local development or continuous integration. And these things have been very historically hard on the Salesforce platform. And so we want to change that. We want to make that better. And a lot of these tools, a lot of these features, like scratch orgs, are trying to make continuous integration better. So um, again, DX is kind of all of this stuff, right? It is our commitment to improve the problems you guys are facing on the platform. So now some other uh, kind of misconceptions, if you will. Um, Salesforce CLI can only be used with DX. Any thoughts, ideas, true, false? False, right? So, I mean, hopefully the fact that it was in quotes, right, the edge kind of, kind of shows you that's false, but um, the Salesforce CLI can actually be used for a wide range of things. Now, the tool was created as part of the DX initiative, but it has, has, has since grown to be so much more than that. So, for example, a user who wants to update a bunch of records can do that through the CLI, even if it doesn't relate to that ALM, right? Or maybe, uh, um, yeah, so anyways. How about Salesforce DX is all or nothing? Any ideas? No? I just see shaking heads. False, yeah. So this is false. Um, in general, since I've talked about it as this wide collection of product, features, tools, you can start to use these in your workflows immediately, right? You can start to use the CLI. You can start to use scratch words to help improve your CI. Um, even packaging, right? If you have all of your metadata in one org and you want to start to break that up to make development easier, uh, you should start using packaging. And we don't want you to take all of your metadata and throw it into one package, right? We want you to start to think about how can I break it up? How can I start with smaller packages, build those up? And so it should never be this all or nothing thing. We want you to incrementally build on top of the things you already have. We want to make your workflows better and improve your problems. How about this? I'm in some use DX. Yeah, I see some yeah, nods there. So true. I mean, I've kind of already mentioned this before. Um, the base, most basic example is an admin can use the CLI to assign a permission set. That may not be part of the workflow, right? But even more than that, Salesforce is a, a little bit unique. There are a lot of other platforms that do this too, but that admins are heavily involved in the ALM, whether we want them to or whether developers want them to be or not, right? They're part of the testing. They're part of the release management. Um, they make changes, uh, configuration changes in prod that you need to pull back in the sandbox. So whether we want it or not, they're part of the developer experience. 
And we're constantly trying to make that better for not only admins, but also for developers so that we can all work together better. And there's a lot more things that you're going to be seeing come out in the future in this, uh, in this area. How about this? I have to use Git. Does everyone here know what Git is? Yeah, for the most part? Uh, so what do you think? True, false? Yeah, so false. So this is kind of twofold. One is um, you do not have to use the version control system, which is what Git is in Salesforce. So there's kind of the two different models of developing on the platform. You have what we call org-based development, where you have your dev sandboxes. Uh, you have your dev sandboxes, and you are making changes there. You're pushing that into a full sandbox copy to do some testing. And then you're doing a change set into production. And that's completely valid. And in that case, the org is your source of truth. That is where all your source lives. On the flip side, you pull all your metadata out of the org, and you put it in, into a version control system. Right? And that makes it better for teams who are developing all in the same code base. It helps you with uh, merge conflicts, all of that stuff. But you don't have to use Git. You can use whatever version control system you want. You can use Perforce, um, SVN. And this kind of shows our goal with DX is to, again, open up the platform, right? Make it so you can use whatever tools that you want to help with your, with your application lifecycle management. Another one here. Scratch words can be used like sandboxes. What do you think? See some grins, some nods, some shaking heads, kind of, maybe. Maybe, but I'm going to go ahead and say false on this one. Um, really, scratch words and sandboxes have pretty different use cases. Scratch words are temporary, so they're short lived, and they start off empty, so you have to build them up from scratch, right? That's kind of where the term scratch word comes in at. And so, um, Really, these are perfect for development, right? Each developer gets their own scratch org, and they can do some development in it. And then when they're done, they throw it away. For CI, you want to spin it up and run your tests and then throw away that environment. It makes it more repeatable so that your continuous integration is not failing because someone forgot to clean up a sandbox. Um, so again, very special use cases. Versus sandboxes are much more tailored for like integration test, end-to-end -end testing, right? That you need some maybe production data to test out the new feature. You need to test all of your services and how they integrate together. These are something that would be more difficult to do in a, a scratch work because you would have to set it up every single time. So when you're, again, thinking about these projects or products and tools, think about the pros and the cons, what they're good for, what other problems you may face. Not everything is going to fix everything for you. Um, and so don't just assume that something can be tailored to something you're doing. Try to look into it. You know, obviously a lot of Trailhead ones are, or uh, Trailhead DS talks are good for this to kind of help clarify what a specific product can do for you. And um, yeah, so there's a lot more misconceptions out there. Those are the main ones I hear all the time. If you guys have questions or what you think you're not sure about, you know, make sure you ask. Reach out to us here, reach out to us on Twitter, reach out to a product manager um, and get some clarification. And just to recap, Salesforce DS is our commitment to improve the developer experience. Okay, so let's start referring to it what it is. Let's start talking about it as um, not a product, not a tool, right? It's just this overall umbrella of the experience of working on the platform. Now, here's some other things to, to look at at Trailhead. This is my list. I highly encourage you guys to obviously get your own, right? Like, whatever is going to improve your workflows is what you want to learn more about. Um, I thought some of these were interesting. I highly recommend going to the super session, the Salesforce Heart DX super session. Some of the messaging that I talked about here is kind of going to be reiterated there, as well as a lot of the new things that we're coming out with um, to, again, improve your experience on working on the platform. Here's a roadmap slide. You may see this in a lot of other sessions. I'm not going to go into any of these uh, things that are coming out. What I really want to come across on this slide is that this roadmap is based on you guys. So when we hear from you and we hear your pain points and we hear things you're struggling with, that directly impacts what we're going to build to improve the experience. We don't want you guys to suffer. Um, with as many problems as there are on any platform, um, the goal is to constantly improve that. Right. So if you do have problems, if you do have bugs, if you do have issues, reach out to us. Reach out to a product manager. Uh, post an idea exchange. There's so many avenues and venues to help get your problems fixed rather than just saying, oh, well, I guess that's the way it is. I guess I'll just have to struggle and live with it. Um, so yeah, I really want you guys to 
encourage us to be better, right? Push us to be better, um, and let's really fix the, let's improve the, the developer experience on the platform for everyone. Um, and that, with that, that's really all I have. Uh, so we have, yeah. <laughs> so we have four minutes if anyone has questions, or I'll just hang around if anyone wants to talk. But if not, then thank you.